did a lot of work with publishers. You, you do a lot of work in, in ad blocking. Ad blocking seems to have been displaced a little bit in terms of its headlines at the moment by brand safety and other things. Do you think this is a problem that's leveling out, or do you? Uh... No, it'll continue to grow. But the issue is not around ad blocking per se. It's about it's about transparency and media transactions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Every time someone consumes a piece of content, it has to be paid for by someone. Um, and, and, and that entity can be the advertiser, or that entity could be the user directly. You know, Spotify is a, is a, is a wonderful business that, that um, really disrupted the music industry. Uh, you think uh, companies like Hulu and Netflix, uh, they, they are not advertising-driven organizations, and yet the content is paid for. I think there needs to be um, a number of different models available to uh, users online, both in desktop and, and in app, and those those choices will be made available over the next few years. Hmm. So yeah, we see. don't we don't really seem to have a scarcity of inventory. That's never really been digital's problem. <laughs> we seem to have an <laughs> overabundance of inventory, I mean, yeah. and as a result, so that you know, either you have sort of a, you know a flat mobile have sort of flat demand and started a little escalation, but supply of inventory has been like this. I mean, economics tell you it's going to be the deal of the century. And all our research bears that out as the deal of the century. So and I like Ben's approach, though, too. I think that it will be interesting to see if consumers actually switch to some alternative models sufficiently at some point to say, ooh, I can't get the premium audience anymore because he or she is willing to pay for you know, ad-free content. That might get everybody's attention at some point. OK, so uh, we've been given sort of roughly five minutes to open uh, the floor out for questions now. So uh, you've got a fantastic panel here. So uh, let's ask them some questions. I think we have, a, we have a question down here, please, if somebody could bring the microphone around. And could other people let me know if you want to ask questions as well? Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, just Sorry, say, who, could you say who, uh, where you're from and who you are? Yeah, Scott McLernan. From? Um, San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll have to do. Um, so, uh, but I'm one of the guys that Greg was talking about that was around in 2000 during some of the discussion points uh, around this very topic. And I'm just curious for the, for the panel, because you have a terrific representation of everybody except publisher up there. Um, and that is, at, representing publishers for, for quite some time, we really want to just do what we're told. And we're curious as to where that source of information should come from to tell us what to do. Meaning that, for instance, measurement standards were once set by the IAB. Um, now they seem to be set by the MRC, but then they're also set by the various vendors that align with the various agencies. Group M came out uh, several years ago around transparency and that everything needed to be 100% viewable. Um, so I'm just curious, as to the panel's discussion, certainly you've got a, very, a couple of very big brands up there, um, where do you land in terms of who should be setting these standards that should then tell publishers and advertisers globally um, how we should be measuring and how we should be um, setting transparency rules? I, I think, Nicole, if I can ask you to address that question, it, it feel, feels as though it's more probably up Greg and Ben's uh, street, but if you wouldn't mind talking, you know, as a brand, yeah. whether you want to address that question. Um, you know, I don't know if I know the right answer of who it is, but what I can say is I think that's one of the pieces that's very confusing about the topic in general. Um, you know, even when we think about our own contracts or who it is that we're supposed to say is that number one standard, there isn't a go-to standard. If you're talking about TV, you talk about Nielsen ratings. That doesn't exist today, and I think it's because of all the fragmentation in digital. And you know, people talk about the loom escape and all these things, but things are not condensing, that they just continue to grow. But until we get to some consolidation, I think it's going to be harder and harder to make those decisions. Well, actually, there is, there is fact on this one, at least for the US. It is the MRC, and it was mandated by Congress. By Congress. MRC, our, the US Congress set up MRC in 1961 because they believed uh, media was a uh, right and ratings were the protection of that right, and therefore um, they set up the MRC. Now the challenge is, as God knows, because he was on the board when I was running the IB, and we set the standard, we worked with the MRC to do that, but a number of the publishers, including at the time our vice chairman, said, I'm not gonna go get accredited. And I'm like, well then why the hell are we sitting around the table trying to come up with a standard? Like, what's the point? And so I do think, unless marketers really step in and reinforce MRC's um, right to do this, and the MRC works with auditors, so there's a whole process and works with the industry. They've got that whole system. Unless that happens, you're still going to have this confusion. Yeah, but we have been trying this. Huh? We have been trying with the WFA, uh, with the industry bodies, the, uh, you know, and agency uh, representatives mm. for the past one year or so. But it, it becomes that conversation which never ends 
and never comes to, uh, never comes to a, conclusion. Yeah, a decision. Okay, we've just got a couple of minutes left, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that there will be more questions. So could we have a, this gentleman here, please? Hi, Phil Guest from SmartPipe. Um, a lot of the talk today is around validation of the impression, ensuring it's reaching an audience, or in fact it's even been seen. And some of the panel have talked about the use of data and the ability to target that audience. Does the panel in the future see the same rigor being applied to uh, understanding the quality of the data sources, uh, where you're looking at more scrutiny about where that coming from, where the, the provenance, provenance is? Perhaps you could talk a little bit about your experiences or thoughts on that in the future. Ben, do you have a point of view on that? I mean, sure. I, you know, value is only given to the data. Uh, I mean, again, uh, actually, they, they buy a lot more data than, than I ever have. Um, but having an understanding of, of your audience and where it comes from and what the, what the degradation of the cookie or you know, what the matching you do of the, the, the IDFA, um, you, know, you use reliable partners and you ask for definitions of, of, of what, you know, where the data came from and, and, and what it's doing. So I, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't necessarily see that yeah. same problem. The, the, no, it's, I think it's completely unacceptable. And we haven't begun to have that debate yet. In fact, it's absolutely, I'm just shocked at all ends that we don't even begin to talk about that one yet. And by the way, those discussions, I have heard them exist, but never really at an industry level. So we don't have basic agreement to impression guidelines, which is what guides how the money gets traded. We let alone don't even have any clarity as to really what we're buying. There's a whole bunch of data quality, and it affects everything, not just sort of the target. It affects the way we do multi touch attribution and attrib everything else. The whole but thing falls apart. It's a big issue. As advertisers, we, we feel the pain because yeah. we create assets, we then spend to amplify those assets to reach the target audiences. Then we try and understand and invest behind knowing whether it actually reached those people, right? And now we are talking about trying to understand whether the data sources where we pull from yeah. uh, are authentic or not. So it's just investment after investment that we are asked to make um, to just reach the consumer mm -hmm. in an environment which is supposed to be fully transparent, uh, deliver you the value that you're yeah. looking for which is incredible. I think in some regards, I mean, the MMA's current view, because we've talked about this at the board, is that we're hoping that multi-touch attribution becomes the sort of standard and norm, and if anybody knows anything about multi-touch attribution, that's a little like, you know, this is like searching for the holy grail. Like, it's all, really everybody wants it, but oh my God, it's really hard to find. I'm hoping that that gets around it. I don't think we have enough clarity, but just to your basic core point, because I, I know your company, so I know kind of where your question's going. There is no standards for what any marketer is buying from a data from a data profile standpoint. We haven't even really agreed to what a car in tender might be or any of these other definitions. But Greg, there are eleven different kinds of multi-touch attribution, I believe. There are, you know, there, there are there are nineteen of them and they use twenty-five different statistical models to measure themselves. Which is why marketers have said multi-touch attribution has a net promoter score on average of a negative twenty-nine. How many of you have businesses that do a negative twenty-nine net promoter score? No, right, you wouldn't be invited to, you couldn't pay to come to this conference, your business would be dead. Exactly, it's a big problem. Okay, um, our time is up. Sorry that we can't answer all, the, uh, all your questions today. And in fact, I don't think we can answer all of the industry's questions today. Uh, but to do please give a, a round of applause to our great panel. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. A good debate, we like that.